Higher interest rates have taken a bite out of the Toronto area, seemingly insatiable appetite for real estate, with both home prices and home sales dropping in the month of April and into May. And what we're seeing in the GTA play out is also happening across the coast in Vancouver. Now, specifically looking at the Toronto area's real estate market, the average price of a home or condo has dropped 3.6% going from April and into May. This marks the second consecutive month where we've seen prices decline. Let that sink in for a moment. Prices are now dropping just as fast as they've been going up. As I've said on this channel numerous times over numerous videos, that real estate prices can't keep going up forever uninterrupted. And I know for a fact that I've heard from many of you out there that real estate prices can only go up in one direction and that is up. And that there's no way that prices would ever come down. That is simply not the case. Prices have come down historically before, not just in Canada but worldwide. Real estate prices do go up as well as down. There is no economic asset class that can keep going up forever uninterrupted. The key word being uninterrupted. It may very well go up over the very long time, but there will and has to be periods where the market will face correction and or crashes. And we're seeing the exact same thing happen in the stock market. Every single asset class is being reevaluated because of higher interest rates. First, I want to provide some background on why rising interest rates are actually causing the housing market to go down. When you do evaluation, whether it's the present value of discounted cash flows or another approach, you'll need to use something called the risk-free rate. This risk-free rate represents the interest an investor would earn from a risk-free investment over a specified period of time. As this rate changes, this also causes a change in valuations. Simply put, higher rate, lower valuation. And housing is an economic asset class. Your ability to borrow and get a mortgage depends on the interest rate. The higher this interest rate goes up, the lower amount of mortgage you can borrow. And of course, the lower you can borrow, that limits how much you can actually pay for housing. So that's the theoretical behind valuations and the housing market in general. Let's see how the actual numbers are playing out across the GTA real estate market. So here we have a map that shows the home prices in the GTA. What you'll see are the orange areas, these light orange call it, are markets that are actually facing a decline. These more darker orange colors are actually showing flat valuations from month over month. And on the left hand side, this west area of the GTA is actually facing declines shown by this bluish grayish color. So first let's start off with the west region, Oakville. In just one month, the composite index is down close to 6%. Look at that little graph right here. From 1.6 million where the average cost of the home was, down to now 1.5 million. And it may even go down further to less than 1.5 to maybe 1.3, 1.4. We'll see how far this goes down. Plus Oakville. Taking a look at Milton, a lot of people have been migrating, especially from the GTA, from Mississauga, from Brampton into the Halton Hills in Milton. And Milton is down 7% overall from a composite index, where it was peaking 1 point, close to 1.5 million and it's now down to 1372. And what's interesting is if you actually take out the breakouts between detached, detached is down almost 8%, attached down over 8%. Townhomes down close to 9%, where if you bought a townhome in Milton back in, let's say, February or January, you probably played close to 800000 now. That same house in a matter of weeks is going for closer to 700 k That's a drop of $100,000. Alton Hills down 5% in just one month. What's really interesting is if you look at it in the last year, it went up 30%, but in just a single month with two rate hikes, it's down 5%. And there are plenty more rate hikes to come. What will be interesting to see is that in the coming months, how far down does this graph go? And make sure you pay attention to this channel where I will be covering in real time the housing market as it goes through these downward trends. So that's the West End. Let's talk about another very popular city, Mississauga. Mississauga seems to be flat and it's actually the first time in many, many years that it's actually seeing a downward trend month over month. Now, what's really interesting to see will be in the summer months, how much lower can this go? In Mississauga, let's actually break down the different types of homes. Taking a look at detached homes, where the average price is now 1.7, that's down close to 2%. Attached home, meaning semi-detached, that we're going for 1.2, are also down 2%. Townhomes is where you're holding flat at 25 basis points, 
and condos are still seeing some gains because they're still lower compared to you know detached homes so there might be some affordability here that remains now let's take a look at some of the other areas of toronto on the east and north side newmarket as an example is down two percent Richmond Hill down 80 basis points overall and just again these are down figures in just one month Vaughn down 1.5 percent what's really interesting I'm finding is that the north seems to be down maybe one or two percent compared to the west end that's been down like eight percent over here this let's see here down four percent down two percent where else we got Bradford West down 1.36 percent so they are facing some reasonability of pricing corrections over here not as much as the west end let's check out some other areas down three percent so as you can see the weaknesses are all across the board now are some areas that are in their orange side so the king area holding fairly steady at 1.9 percent uxbridge 0.26 percent oshawa down close to three percent clarington down four percent ajax down three percent it's actually kind of fun to look at pickering down one percent so what I'm finding really interesting is you'll see some weaknesses here, maybe around 4% here, 1% to 2% here, same thing, 1% to 2% here. When you have some pockets of resistance, we're actually seeing slight price gains or holding flat. Now let's actually move into Toronto to see what we're actually seeing in certain areas. So the, again, these lighter orange colors are also down. So if we look at North York Northeast, down 49 basis points. North York Core West, down 38 basis points. Let's actually go down to the Toronto Core. What are we seeing in the Toronto Core? Toronto Core West holding steady at 54 basis points. Toronto Core East 2.58, which makes sense because see these are areas that are around the million dollar mark. So there are some you know that are still looking for Toronto proper area homes. If we actually break it down, are we seeing declines? There it is. So what we're seeing is the drop in prices of the really top end of homes. So detached where you're going for 1.8 million are actually down 3%. Attached, down 3.45%. Townhomes are holding steady again because there are the next levels of affordability. Again, affordability being relative based on you know these market valuations, 1%. Let's take another look at Bloor West. So if we look at detached homes, down 1.4%. Attached, down. So there's definitely a mixed bag where the prices are close to 1.7, 1.8 million, there's definitely weaknesses where they're down, you know, two, three, four percent. So if we change this map to just detached homes, as you can see, they're more downward areas. Looking at attached, again, Clarington down 5.5%. If I change this to apartments, they're still holding relatively steady in terms of condos because they are the only ones that are remaining that are sort of affordable, especially when you take a look at a 1.8 million home versus 800k condo people will gradually lead towards condos because they can still you know relatively achieve those mortgages as you can see looking at the numbers the market has changed this is no longer speculation that the market will drop or the market may drop the market has dropped so for those of you holding up that the market cannot drop these numbers say otherwise we're no longer seeing the same bully offers we're no longer seeing multiple bids trying to outbid each other this is a different market and seemingly change overnight as these interest rate hikes are coming through. Because think about it, why buy a home right now when you can potentially save $100,000 or more just by simply waiting a few more months? I mean, just saying that out loud, you could potentially save $100,000 just by waiting a few months. That's a lot of money in a relatively short period of time. And to recap, the Bank of Canada first raised its interest rate from 0.25% to 0.5% back in March. In April, the interest rate hike went up 50 basis points or double that in March to 1% where it is today. And the rising rates do not just stop here. Economists are predicting that by the end of the year, we're bound to see an interest rate of closer to 2.25% from the current 1% as of the recording of this video. As you can clearly see, the damage done by just two interest rate hikes is clearly evident. It's changed the market overnight. And what happens when you introduce even more rate hikes that are to come, the biggest one happening in June at another 50 basis points. And that is the current expectation that the Bank of Canada will raise another 50 basis points in June. I mean, it's really interesting to see what right, these rising interest rates have done to the market. And I've been calling for this over many videos that the housing prices can't keep going up forever. If you've been watching this channel, you've been staying up to date with these housing market updates, this should not be a surprise. And if you're new to the channel or you've seen my content before, do me one huge favor. Hit that like, subscribe, or thanks button on the bottom of this video because it lets me know to produce more content like this 
and you can stay on top of these housing market updates so you know exactly what to expect and when. Between higher mortgage rates and the higher cost of just everything else all the way from food to gas, home buyers are now pausing and are causing themselves to reevaluate on how much they can actually afford to just spend on anything. The news outlets are all reporting that there have been fewer and fewer showings all across the GTA for over a month now. Although there are some homes and neighborhoods that we saw in the graph recently that are still showing some competition, but that's now in the minority. Sellers simply don't want to believe that their homes are now worth less than compared to their neighbors who sold for more than just a few weeks ago. Because what we're seeing right now are those that have seen their neighbors sell their home for let's say a million dollars, and now that very same home that they own today is worth maybe $900,000. And according to accounting firm MNP, those looking to renew their mortgages, the numbers don't look pretty either. Let's take a look at some of these stats. 15% say they're not financially prepared to deal with a rate increase of more than a percentage point. 34% are saying that they don't make enough to cover their bills and debt payments. 46% say they are $200 away or less from not being able to meet all of their financial obligations. And 50% say that they regret the amount of debt they have accumulated. These are not great stats. As you can see, financial distress, financial stress is in abundance today. People are really worried about their finances. On the flip side, many exhausted and priced at home hunters were waiting for this moment. They were hoping that the market would turn in their favor. At the same time, no one wants to really see families struggle where their homes are worth less or are underwater compared to their mortgages, meaning your home is actually worth less than the amount of money you owe the bank. That's called an underwater mortgage. And that's a very stressful situation to be in. And for those of you who have been shut out of the market, there's almost a seemingly animosity towards investors, towards flippers, who've made a lot of money in this massive run up in housing prices, while ordinary families have been stuck on the sidelines facing financial distress. Canadians over the last two years have been taking on significantly larger mortgage payments just to keep up with escalating home prices. That's putting a lot of pressure on personal balance sheets. The question is, with the debt burdens rising, rates surging, and inflation causing everything to be higher except for income? What happens when home prices continue to fall and home equity shrinks further? Yes, believe it or not, the Toronto area market has seen three downturns in the last 25 years. Let's recap for those of you that may not know. One was the early days of the pandemic in 2020 where we did see some softening spots in the market. Two, there were post-policy changes back in 2017 when the government introduced some new tax measures. And of course, three, the 2008-2009 financial crisis that also caused home prices to soften. In the US back in 2008, what was supposed to be months of distress in the financial and housing markets turned into years, resulting in an actual reset in housing values for multiple generations. There was no doubt in my mind that these surging home prices were unsustainable, that a market crash or a correction was inevitable. And this is exactly what we're seeing today play out. But having said that, a drop in housing prices doesn't actually affect all households equally. A family that bought a home at least a decade ago that took out a smaller mortgage and has no issues making monthly mortgage payments is definitely in a much better position to weather this storm. Because if you already have a ton of equity in your home, then all you're losing out on is some paper wealth in this downturn market. But on the other hand, a young family taking out an enormous mortgage just to enter this white hot housing market will be facing a much more challenging position. Now, you may not feel the impact of pricing declines right away, but add another financial shock such as a job loss to an upcoming recession, or maybe even a life-changing event like a death in the family or a divorce that can make it really hard for one person to carry on the mortgage on their own. Now, this change in dynamics could put a lot more personal balance sheets into question and put them into shaky grounds. For many struggling home buyers, a price drop like what we're seeing today may present itself as an opportunity. But according to experts, rising rates will actually make up any difference in home prices. The real upside now at least is that prices have at least flattened or dropped based on your area. And buyers can once again put conditions on their offers again. And for those of you who bought your home during the market peak in February, if you plan to live in your home for at least the next 5 years, then any short term pricing decline may not matter in the long run. Now investors who are often landlords themselves and whose cash flows are likely tied to their tenants will only be impacted if employment falls and tenants are taken out of the market like we saw similar in COVID-19. It's the flippers who will take the biggest hit in this type of downturn market. Anyone who has bought a home recently just to sit on for as little time as possible and is banking on massive price appreciation will be majorly out of luck because you'll likely be waiting for a massive payoff in appreciation that will likely not materialize in this type of downturn market. 
of fraudless housing market that we've all been witnessing build up to no end is finally starting to disappear. And now what about the population boom? You might be thinking, well, this is just a small blip on the radar with massive amount of immigrants, something to the tune of 1.2 million immigrants in the next maybe one or two years coming in will likely change the dynamics of this housing market and prices will go up again, right? Well, that's a very good question. Let's answer that. According to BMO Capital Markets, during the last significant home price crash, Canada's population actually grew at the fastest rate possible. The bank is essentially warning that rising interest rates have a much greater influence on home prices than does the population. Toronto and Vancouver, two of the largest cities in Canada, are facing a booming population. That much is still true. Now, based on early data, despite the population growth, home prices and home sales are still declining, and this trend is expected to continue at least for the next foreseeable future. Higher interest rates have pretty much killed the demand for mortgages and have broken that speculation mindset that we saw take over the housing market in the last two years. Toronto sales are down 40% year over year and that's just the early days of higher interest rates. In the last four decades, the period between 1988 and 1990 just happened to post the strongest population boom for Canada. And despite that, that still did not stop the house prices from falling out because interest rates were also starting to rise up during that very same period. So what I'm trying to say is that history does not repeat, but it sure does rhyme with itself, and we can get an idea of what to expect in the future based on looking at what happened in the past. Demand drives higher home prices, but demand itself is much bigger than just the number of people living in a country. Liquidity, which depends on leverage and credit availability, is what ultimately drives home prices, whether it may be higher or lower. Because it really doesn't matter if your home was worth a million dollars last week, if the next qualified buyer today only has access to $800,000. In this situation, the seller either gets to accept less or sit on the property and wait for another buyer who may even have less to offer. That's the dice roll you have to make in this type of downturn market. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out all the links in the description below for some amazing sign up bonuses and awesome discounts which will either add money to your account or give you the ability to save on money, which is especially important in this type of market. And now also sign up for your channel membership and provide direction for future content. That's it for now. I'll talk to you in the comment section.